AI reasoning is getting way too real, and now it's like watching a brain at work. Recent models like R1, O3 Mini, and Grok 3 aren't just calculating answers, they're thinking in ways that feel more human. But what if I told you these new models don't just think, they think way faster than we ever could. And now with the ability to reflect like humans, it opens an entirely new paradigm of AI. But the real question is, what's actually happening inside these models? How do they process multiple thought paths at once and then retrace them if something doesn't add up, all while explaining it step by step? Before we dive in, we need to understand whether the reasoning we see is even real or just an illusion of logic. Because when you look at models like O3 Mini, there's this sneaking hmm. suspicion that what you're getting isn't a true chain of thought. People argue that it's more like a synthetic layer wrapped around the real reasoning process which is designed to appear logical but not actually be the genuine internal workings. So if we look at O3 Mini's chain of thought, it actually seems like a filtered, artificial version of the model's internal thought process which is designed to simulate reasoning in a simplified manner for the user. It appears like the model is going through a reasoning process but it's often a manufactured flow to mimic the structure of logical thought without even fully reflecting how the model arrived at those conclusions. If we compare it to Grok 3, we can see it has more genuine chain of thought model. According to XAI, their Colossus supercomputer, which was created in a matter of eight months, sped up the development of Grok 3. With 200,000 NVIDIA H100 GPUs, the system offered 200 million GPU hours for training, which is 10 times more than Grok 2, and because of this huge increase in computational power, Grok 3 has been able to process huge data sets and increase accuracy in such a small time frame. Now, don't be fooled into thinking that Grok's reasoning is perfect. After all, it's not a sentient being meditating in the Himalayas, it's still an AI working off patterns and calculations, but what it does really well is that it knows what it's talking about. And unlike O3 Mini, which delivers its reasoning in a neat, shiny little package, Grok 3 gives you the raw, unfiltered thoughts like it's having a conversation with you. And occasionally you're left wondering, thinking that this is how the robot uprising starts. But why O3 Mini reflects differently? Well, the answer lies in speed and computation. We have seen reasoning models taking minutes before they answer, and now with OpenAI's deep research tool, which is actually O3 with the ability to browse and analyze data, takes up to 30 minutes to give a single output. So a model was needed which is speedy and compute efficient, and that's where O3 Mini shines, or at least tries to. It's the sprinter in a marathon built to prioritize speed over substance. But here's the catch. Speed often comes at the expense of depth. The reasoning process is trimmed, polished, and simplified to the point where you get the highlights, but all the messy bits, the doubts, and potential aha moments have been edited out probably to spare you the existential crisis of knowing what a machine actually thinks when solving problems. But does it mean AI actually can think now? And how close is AI compared to human reasoning? The answer, pretty close. But hold your horses before jumping to conclusions. Let's first break down what thinking really means in the world of circuits and code. Human reasoning simply is a cocktail of logic, instinct, and some questionable decisions we make at 3 a.m. An AI in its current form doesn't actually think in the same way humans do. Unlike humans who reasons in an unpredictable and often nonlinear way, AI reasoning follows a clear, predefined path. They use what's known as a chain of thought, but at the cost of any real creativity. At the end of the day, AI isn't actually thinking, it's just crunching numbers and recognizing patterns like a glorified calculator in a fancy suit pretending to be deep. But here's where it gets unsettling. What happens when those glorified calculators start pulling together research that not only matches but, in some cases, surpasses what an expert researcher can do? Yes, I am talking about deep research, which flips the script entirely. It's not just about linear reasoning or basic information retrieval. Unlike Grok 3's Deep Search and Perplexity's Deep Research, which sprint for quick answers and focus on information retrieval, Deep Research powered by the O3 model takes a much longer and more strategic approach. Why? Because it's designed to synthesize rather than just summarize. And the wild part is, it isn't just connecting the dots, it's generating new dots by spotting patterns that weren't obvious before. This kind of metacognition isn't just impressive. It's downright terrifying for certain industries. Take consultancy firms, for example. Those polished suits charging six figures to tell you what you already suspected will be doomed and why spend six months and hundreds of thousands of dollars on a team of analysts when deep research can do the same job better and for a fraction of the price. And let's not forget the benchmark it crushed. Humanity's last exam, a nightmare test designed to break the spirit of advanced reasoning models where it casually flexed with a 26.6% accuracy, blowing past GPT 40s 3.3%, and even outshining its own sibling O3 Mini at 13%. Though the cost is $200 per month, you're capped at just 100 queries. That's $2 per question, which means every time you hit enter, you better hope it's worth it. But why so expensive? Because this isn't a chatbot spitting out Wikipedia summaries, it's a compute intensive beast churning through thousands of sources for each response, and even OpenAI admits that pro users only get limited access because the current model is so resource hungry. And that's probably why Sam Altman was recently spotted roaming around helium energy like a man on a mission, because at this point AI doesn't need better models or algorithms, it needs a power source that won't set OpenAI's electricity bill on fire. Forget GPUs and data centers, the real key to AI's next evolution is cheap, unlimited compute powered by nuclear fusion. Now the most important question, where does it all connect? Here's the brutal truth, AI is no longer a tool you simply use, it's becoming the secret 
sauce that decides who's swimming in success and who's drowning in the competition. For businesses, it means you'll either harness this technology to move faster, think deeper and outsmart your competitors, or you'll be the one left in the dust googling how to stay relevant. And for everyday users, you're witnessing the dawn of a world where strategic thinking isn't reserved for consultants or specialists anymore. It's being democratized, automated, and scaled to the point where even your grandma could out-strategize an entire boardroom. And if you are wondering how DeepSeek R1 works, go watch this video.